last time on Slayers the Ruby Eye. I came here prepared to pay three times the street value for the item. Not 100! How dare you waste our time! Are you trying to make enemies at this point? I would rather die than work with the likes of you. It seems our negotiations have reached an impasse. You and I will become enemies the moment you step foot outside of this inn. Now resuming Slayers the Ruby Eye, Chapter 2, Part 2. <laughs> it's kind of funny. You can never really get tired of a beautiful sky, can you? I was lying face up in a green field, staring at a clear blue sky. The sun was warm on my face. The earth was warm on my back. Everything felt really nice. The air around us was filled with birdsong, and the thick, chlorine smell of blood. Yes sir, that sure is one hell of a sky. Uh, hey, Lena. Sir Gary, who was flat on his back. Yes, Gary? Do you really think you should be taking things this easy, especially when other people are still fighting? Oh, uh, did I mention the heaps of berserker corpses around me and Gary? No? Well, there were... Heaps of berserker corpses around me and Gary. There. <laughs> <sighs> oh yeah, sorry about that. I did fight, though. For a little bit. Yeah, you did. And I'm not begrudging you that. I'm just saying, you cast one attack spell and then said, Fuck this, it's up to you. And then you buggered off. Well, I can see how you would see it like that. Uh, uh... No, Lena. I assure you, that is exactly what you did. Using his sword as a cane, he rose to his feet. Uh, I would like to rest a little bit longer. Gary turned and looked down at me. Lena, we're going to be easy targets for them if we don't make it to the next town by the end of the day. Come on, get up, we're going. He wasn't being unreasonable, but I didn't feel like tearing myself away from the clouds just yet. I was pretty exhausted from all the hard work that I did earlier. Um. Lena, come on. He cooed like a father to a child, hoping I would get up and follow him. He started to walk away unusually slowly. Come on, or I'll leave you behind. Oh, really? This is just embarrassing. <laughs> just give me five more minutes. It's really nice and warm here. Lena, we don't have time for this. Come on. He snapped, turning around, grabbing me by the mantle above my shoulder and jerking me up. Oh! The pain was unbearable. My forehead sunk to the ground as I collapsed, clutching at my right hip. It's an embarrassing thing to admit, but I confess, I'm really not good at handling pain. I placed my right hand over my wound and focused my energy there. I managed to croak out a healing spell. It felt like it took a hundred years, but the pain finally receded. A light wound would have healed very quickly, but this one... This is probably going to take a while. Lena? Yes, Gallery? I remained as calm as I could under the circumstances. Not that I was fooling anyone, but just for my own well-being. You're hurt. I managed a small smile, making it as unthreatening as possible. It's really nothing. I cooed sweetly. Gary frowned, kneeling down beside no, me. Seriously, it's not- ah! You fucking asshole! Gary had abruptly thrust his hand beneath my cloak to locate the wound. If you won't tell me what's wrong, how he can froze. I- froze. The warm dampness he felt made him pull his hand back in surprise. You're- you're bleeding. Uh, no, I'm- I'm fine. It, I'm not bleeding nearly as badly as I was earlier. How badly were you bleeding earlier? Ah, uh, you know, uh, a little bit- a little bit more. <laughs> Give me a moment. I am fine, Gary, I promise. I am casting a healing spell. I did- I started a few minutes ago. I'll be as good as new in a little bit. Look, I'd rather you think I'm lazy than you ask me if I'm okay every ten seconds, okay? Okay. I'm I'm sorry. Look, it's fine. Just come come sit with me for a bit. So Gary sat in front of me, watching me heal. Which was about as productive as watching water boil. Can you stop staring? I mean, I'm glad that he was concerned, but I don't like people seeing me when I'm weak. It just makes me feel ugh, icky. There's nothing worse than feeling weak and icky all at once. Oh god, so you've been hurt this entire time. You weren't just cloud watching earlier, you had your hands full trying to keep your organs in. 
I'm sorry I misunderstood. I feel like such an asshole. Told you, Gary, it's fine. He grew silent. For a while, all we could hear was the wind. The... after that thing again, I said, breaking the silence. Last night, I did some research into some of that stuff. What stuff? Uh, stuff like, um, what kind of magical mark the mummy man could have placed on whatever object he wanted to... Did you manage to figure anything out? I shook my head. We're talking about an Orihalcon statue, a sharp broad blade knife, and a collection of gold coins. None of these items have any sort of magical mark, as far as I can tell. Well then, what's next? <sighs> well, I think we can at least roll out the coins. It's pretty clear that he's after one object, not a group of objects, so that leaves the knife or the statue. Then it should, should you really be talking so much while you're wounded? Gary, please stop looking at me like that. I'm alright, I'm almost fully healed. Almost is not the same as fully healed. Gary, I said I'm okay, you're getting on my nerves now. So, anyway, the magic on that knife probably keeps it sharpened. It's not a high quality spell, still, it might carry a magic mark on it. And on the other hand, there's that Orihalcon statue. Orihalcon's a rare metal that has the power to seal magic. So, you can't mark that? Okay, yes, and no, this is where it gets complicated. If you went to the astral plane, you could track the spiritual energy the metal gives off. Are you following? Not really, no. Well, suffice to say, he could mark either one. Why does he want it so bad in the first place? That's just it, I can't figure that out either. Orihalcon is a valuable metal and the knife's got decent enough craftsmanship, but neither of them are like particularly amazing or anything. But something is making him desperately need this item. Yeah, desperate enough to offer you a job. Why? He said that in half a year, he'd be able to give you three times the price you demanded, so it must be worth even more than that to him. Maybe the object's supposed to show you where some buried treasure is or something. I know what you're thinking, and I was thinking it too. The buried treasure concept sounds like a something from a fairy tale, right? Agreed. But it also makes a kind of sense. So you think it might be some kind of key? That's brilliant. It is? Gary was the one who thought of it, but he didn't seem overwhelmingly confident in his own theory. Yes, a magic key, that could totally be it. I've heard of nobles using that kind of thing to safeguard their mansions. Let's say there's a fountain in the courtyard that only opens to the treasure vault when a certain young woman enters. In that case, that young woman's the key. So, this key could be anything, magical or not, right? Exactly. So, if the statue or the knife are in the right place... Then something might happen. Or not. Okay, I think I get it now. Well, it's not much of an idea yet, however... <sighs> I managed to rise to my feet somehow. <sighs> Walking was still difficult, but it wasn't impossible. Whoa there. For fuck's sake, I'm fine. I'm just worn out. I'm not helpless. As Gary stood, he eyed me as if I was made of glass. <sighs> okay, Wait, come here. Wait, what? No. Huh? What? I cried out as Gary hoisted me into his arms. It didn't hurt, it just startled me a little. Hey, wh what, do you, what do you think you're doing? Uh, damn it. I could feel my face burning red as a poppy as he explained exactly what he thought he was doing. Uh, well, I'm just going to carry you for a while until it's easier for you to walk. I'm fine. And, and you're tired too. Put me down. Gary! My grandma always made me promise to be nice to little girls, so that's what I'm doing. He said with a wink. If he had left out the little girl part, I probably wouldn't have hit him. Oh well. <laughs>